Hi, I'm Walt Cockshaw. I've been uploading my train videos for a long time, but today I want to share my faith with you. And I'm doing this because Jesus told us to do so. He said, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Or as it says in the Bible in basic English, go into the world and give the good news to everyone. The word gospel means good news, and we all like good news. But what is this good news Jesus talked about? Most of us think of good news in terms of getting something that we need or want. However, few ever think that we will receive it when this life ends. The Bible says, For God had such love for the world that he gave his only Son so that whoever has faith in him may not come to destruction, but have eternal life. Most of us tend to think of death as the end of everything, and we aren't very interested in promises about an afterlife. However, in the Bible it says that we will have an existence after we die. This good news for me began when I was a teenager. I went forward at a Bible conference and trusted in Jesus. Of course, I didn't understand everything about being a Christian. However, I can tell you it started me in a wonderful journey that has brought me to share my faith here. In the Bible we read, He who has faith in his Son has eternal life. But he who has not faith in his son will not see life. God's wrath is resting on him. And in another place it says, And these shall go away into eternal punishment, but the upright into eternal life. According to these verses, some will receive punishment. Can one be punished if death is the end of our existence? Yet many believe that there is no afterlife. In these verses, if we are righteous, we can escape this punishment. As a young man, I was very interested in the good news. However, there is a verse that always bothered me. It's in Romans 3.10. There is not one who does righteousness, not one who has the knowledge of what is right, not one who is a seeker after God. In verse 23, we read, For all have done wrong and are far from the glory of God. How is the good news this everlasting life if there is none righteous in God's sight? Here is what I discovered. In 1 Peter 2.24 it says, He, Jesus, took our sins on himself giving his body to be nailed to the tree, so that we, being dead to sin, might have a new life in righteousness. By his wounds we have been made well. So you can see that God has made a way for us to be cleansed from our sins through Jesus' death on the cross. And that is good news. We are promised eternal life through his resurrection. In Romans 10, verses 9 and 10, it says, Because if you say with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, and have faith in your heart that God has made him come back from the dead, you will have salvation. In verse 10, For with the heart man has faith to get righteousness, and with the mouth he says that Jesus is Lord to get salvation. In 1 John 1, 9 and 10, we read, If we say openly that we have done wrong, he is upright and true to his word, giving us forgiveness of sins and making us clean from all evil. And in verse 10, If we say that we have no sin, we make him false, and his word is not in us. So you can see, the first step in receiving forgiveness is confession. When I first asked God to forgive me and save me, I don't think I really understood all that was involved in my decision. 
Although I knew I had done some things that wouldn't please God, I really didn't think I was so bad. As I began to learn more about God and Jesus, I realized that my motivation for believing in Jesus was more to escape hell than to live my life for Him. Many of the things I was doing may not have looked like sin to others. However, they were sin because they were done for my pleasure and not to please God. In Acts 15.11 we read, But we have faith that we will get salvation through the grace of the Lord Jesus. First, we confess our sins, and we have to be sincere when we do it. But the second step is to believe that Jesus died for us on the cross, accept his salvation, and trust him for all eternity. Oh boy. If we are sincere in our confession, then our sins are forgiven and we appear as righteous before God. When I began to confess my sinfulness to God, I felt his presence in love and as I talked with him in prayer and read his word, he enabled me to grow as a believer. And that is good news indeed. Going to heaven and escaping hell is not all there is to Christian life. There are some wonderful promises right now. In 2 Corinthians we read, Now he that established us with you in Christ and anointed us is God who also sealed us and gave us the earnest of the Spirit in our hearts. And in Acts chapter 1, But you will have power when the Holy Spirit has come on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. First, we have been sealed. That means we can never be taken away from God. Second, we have the Holy Spirit within us so that we can live for Him. Third, we have power so that we can go out and tell others about Jesus. If what I've been saying has made sense to you, and you would really want to become a Christian, you really feel that you want to trust God, all you have to do is tell God the things you've done that you know you shouldn't have done. That is to confess your sins. Be sincere, be honest, and ask Him to come in and, and be a part of your life, to, to be your Savior. And if you do that, I'd love to help you, and I'd like you to get in touch with me. I'd like to recommend that you find a church that really believes the Bible and preaches the good news. And it would be good news for me if I heard from you. You can get in touch with me by emailing me at lcottrell407 at comcast.net.